So back to the technology show. It is the technology show where we translate geek into regular speak. I'm Brett Levy. And if you notice the opening uh, sequence of the show this week, I have to say a big shout out to Cade, my son. Um, it's been a while since we've updated the intro and the outro of the show. Um, he's busy doing some video editing projects. So I thought, well, might as well make him earn his, uh, earn his keep at home. So thanks, Cade. Um, that was great. The outro will be also done by Cade as well. And uh, let's get on to it. So things with a Z. Let's bring up the show. Uh, where's my notes? Right. So this week on things with a Z, I am going to be reviewing JLab's Epic Lab Edition Hybrid Dual Driver ANC True Wireless. Well, wow, that's quite a long description but it is a freaking cool product so let's go now i hardly ever do unboxing videos in fact i can't remember the last time i've actually done an unboxing video but when you open the box and see this and if you're watching the show i've got a picture of the lid off the box and the earbud earbuds are wrapped in a little case and on the wrapping it says it's going to be epic with a big capital epic I just felt that I had to actually show an unboxing picture. Now, before I continue with this review, I'm a huge JLab fan. I do have to put that out there. I've been really lucky enough to su to um, support or support um, to review quite a lot of their products. Um, and where they started out as a quality product at an affordable price, they've really innovated with so many cool headsets, uh, including the frames, which I use. I reviewed a few uh, probably about a year ago, but the frames, a little headset, uh, sorry, earbuds actually clip onto your frames of your glasses, so they sit just off, and I, I use those daily. Um, but today's about the Epic Lab Edition. So what is the Epic Lab Edition? Well, it is what you would expect, right? It's buds um, in a box that you can now. I'm not going to make the mistake I've made on previous shows where I lift up the box and I open the box and all of a sudden we lose our sound because the Bluetooth connects to my computer. What I am going to do is say I am super impressed. And honestly, it, it's actually an understatement. I'm blown away. Um, I feel at this point, I need to remind you that I'm not an audiophile. Uh, I don't have an ear that was tuned by studying at Gilead for five years, or Juilliard rather. Uh, I'm just a regular person like most of you that love technology, love music, and always need to have a decent headset in my armory. Well, this is a decent, actually, no, epic Sorry, I had to do that. Epic headset. So what makes these earbuds epic? Well, I have to do a bit of a geek speak here. The JLAD Epic Lab Edition have hybrid dual drivers, which is apparently a tick in the audiophile box. In fact, the Epic Lab, Epic Lab Edition is the first true wireless headphone to feature the audiophile acclaimed Knowles Preferred Listening Sound Curve. In other words, it's got some pretty cool technology inside there that's accredited by a company that audiophiles respect. That's the translation into geek, right? It has high-res audio and smart active noise cancelling. Now, the smart active noise cancelling is not something that I've really experienced before on, on too many headsets. And what it does, or as its name would intimate, is that instead of just going into active noise cancelling where everything is turned off around you, it actually has various levels of noise cancelling. So when you're in a more noisy environment, it ramps up, I suppose is the better word. And when you're in a less noisy, envir noisy environment, it kind of just tones down a bit. And that, and it's, it's, it's always listening and always active to what's going on around you. Because with noise cancelling, um, the simple science behind it is that there's the microphones that you use to speak uh, and it picks up your voice are actually redirecting and pushing, like listening to the sound and blocking it out. Um, so, you know, what it's doing is it's actually taking and it's around, it surrounds and working out what it needs to do. So that's pretty smart, hence the name. But they also have Bluetooth LE audio. Now, what that is, is inside the box is, I'm dying to open it, but I know that if I open it, it's going to, actually, you can see if you're watching the show, I mean, it makes a difference. If you're watching the show, there's a screen up. In the middle of where the left and right earbud sits, you'll see there's a small little USB-C dongle. And that's what Bluetooth LE audio is. So you plug the USB-C dongle straight into your Mac or, or PC, um, and then it does a direct connection. So this is a stronger connection. 
things like gaming as well, it would reduce lag because you're not reliant on the Bluetooth protocol just on its own. Um, and I know that uh, when you're using things like Teams and Zoom, generally headsets can be problematic. So this will actually remove that. It makes it just clearer and better. Uh, as an Apple user, the fact that they are spatial audio compatible is another huge tick. Now, if you haven't experienced spatial audio, you really are missing out. It's a whole new sound experience. Um, if you have got Apple, Apple Music, and you haven't listened to it, go into that music section, look for the spatial audio uh, playlists. There's multiple different genres, and Apple's releasing different albums and spatial audio all the time. Um, but... It, I don't know how to describe spatial audio. It's kind of like VR for sound because everything gets moved all the way around. So you're hearing in different parts. Um, so I've actually only experienced spatial audio on my over-the-ear headset. So when you've got the full you know, headset on, not disappointing at all listening to them on the Epic earbuds. Um, the sound is its true. It's pure. It's just fantastic. Um Right, so in the box, we talked about unboxing earlier, so I thought I'd put a shot up of the of what's inside the box. So in the box, uh, it's everything that you need. So you've got multiple size tips to ensure that the buds fit perfectly. And besides the silicone tips, there's actually comfortable, it's, it's, I believe it's a registered trademark of JLab. It's called Cloud Foam. Um, these earbuds are really soft, like their name would insist. And instead of that silicone feeling that you get from most of the earbuds, Cloud Foam is quite spongy if you've ever put in um like sleeping earplugs like that foamy stuff that they use or if you've ever gone into a work site where they give you those protecting earbuds to put into your your ears for loud noises that's kind of how cloud foam is it's just it's softer but the importance and they give you six different earbuds so you've got three uh, three or four silicones and three or uh, and two or three it's e either even i can't remember I can remember. I can actually go back to the picture. It shows you. There it is there. So it's three of each, right? You've got a pair on your headset, and then you've got large and small. So the medium's obviously on, and then in the box is large, medium, and small cloud foam. So we were back to that. Um, so you've actually got six different tips. Now, tip changing is what makes a headset a pro headset, uh, and what also facilitates ANC, active noise cancelling, because your ear needs to have a proper seal to lock out the sound. So JLab's doing everything in their power to ensure that there is a tip that fits. And, you know, no one's going to judge you. You might want to put a cloud foam small in your right ear and a silicone medium in your left. It's whatever works for you. I mean, it, it doesn't affect how the thing sounds. It's just got to be how it feels. And people generally do have different sized ears, just as it so happens. Now, there's also USB-C, and it comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable. It is also wireless charging. Um, and according to JLab, around 43 hours of charge in the case and 9 to 13 hours in each bud, depending on whether you're using ANC or not. Now, I thought initially I would just always use ANC, but you don't need to. I mean, if you're not in an environment where it's not noisy, save the battery life and, and you know, just, I mean, the sound's still good. The other thing as well is via the app and also on the, you can do it directly on the, on the I think it's the left bud that controls it. You can have what's called hear through. So you can actually hear sounds around you. Um, so if you're not using active noise cancelling and you're not in normal mode, you can put into hear through mode. So what that actually means is that if you're walking in the street um, or riding a bike or something like that, and you want to be more aware of the environment, the hear through mode is actually quite important. If someone hits a hooter, you're going to hear it. Um, or you might be working in an environment where you're listening to something, but you do need to be aware that if someone calls you, you'll hear them calling you. Now, obviously, with active noise cancelling, you don't hear anything. So, yeah, again, they've thought about this as well. Now, the case is a bit big compared to some of the other buds that I've reviewed. In JLab's defense, the case holds more than double some of the competitors' charge. So it is justifiable. Uh, it's just that if you're carrying the case in your pocket, it is more noticeable. It's not a deal breaker. I'm just pointing it out there. I mean, after I'm doing a review and I'm describing something, um, but it's it is bigger, and I think it. And maybe it's not even so much the size as much as also you do feel it is a bit heavier. But as I said, 43 hours of charge. Uh, it's a pretty good trade-off compared to most of the other headsets that I've reviewed out there, between 20 and 30 hours of charge. Um, so I'll ultimately 
two charges or two recharges of the headsets, uh, the buds. In this case, you're looking at three, um, potentially four. If you're running on ANC and you're needing nine, um, you're going to probably get three to four hours of charge. So, uh, again, it's not a judgment. It's not a negative. I'm just pointing out that the case is a bit bigger. It's also made from an alloy. Um, it's It's got like a – don't open it, Brett. It's got like a zinc alloy – feel to it i don't know but it, it's just it's just a professional grade product um and they're truly epic so aptly named uh well don't take my word for it actually it's my show so take my word for it um but if you go to jaleb's page and look at the comparison between these and some of the other heavy hitters in the space you'll actually be amazed at what you see now i'm not one of those guys that does comparisons i'm never going to get onto my show and and do a comparison between x and y I don't mind comparing same products, you know, like so I can compare J Labs Epic with J Labs Air and so on. But I'm I'm not sure to compare other products versus these products. And in some countries it's actually illegal to do so. So my show is listened to all over the world. But what I can do is I can direct you to their page. Um, I think I've actually got it as a scroller as well. I can put that on. Um, there we go. You should see the website there. But if not, if you're listening, it's jlab.com, J L A B dot com. Have a look in, at the um, the Epic Air, oh, Lab Edition, and you'll see there, if you scroll down, there's a comparison. There's some really big names. It's the names that you would expect to see there. And when you look at the, the um, overview and the comparison, it's pretty damn impressive. So, um, yeah, I would, look, I would never say that tech is perfect, right? And if I had to give it a score, then I'd be remiss if not giving it at least a 9.5 out of 10 in case anyone's going to ask me that question like hey brett what's your score out of i don't know scores and rankings are things i never really remember i kind of just use them at the time to say hey at this moment in time this is what i'm thinking i don't believe there's a perfect tech um that we wouldn't change tech if there was such a thing as a perfect technology um but yeah a 9.5 will hopefully show you that when it comes to earbuds when it comes to um in ear specifically, um, then you know, hopefully, I'm giving it its due due accolade. And again, the fact that I think this is the first time that Knowles, and that's actually what I called the show. I think you know this is going to be epic, and I put LES inside there for Knowles. I think that they've actually partnered with JLab and built this hybrid dual driver um, speaker system. It has to be testament to the fact that you are buying a quality product. Right, last but not least, um, my Kristen Hirsch scale. So if anyone that's never listened to my show before, there's a song by a singer called Kristen Hirsch. Um, oh, it's got to be mid-90s. Um, it's called Your Ghost. And there's this bass line that appears in the song from about the first minute onwards and plays through for the rest of the song. Um, certain headsets do not even pick up the space it's just at such a depth and it's so wide and reverberating and juicy and all the wonderful things that i love about bass but it's just there and you know i, I always call it it's a scale i've come up with i call it the Kristen Kristen her scale because it's my way of actually seeing how good these um buds are or headsets that i'm reviewing at the time now as with most um of the other jlab headsets the accompany app helps um, keep them up to date but also as equalizer controls now in their preset equalizer so you've got two different presets you've got jlab's recommended one you've actually got the Knowles one as it so happened um, there's a base boost and then there's custom and custom would be where you would set it so i flicked on the base boot and um well well let me sum this up right until reviewing the jlab epic earbuds i had never thought that a pair of earbuds would be able to compete with over ear when it comes to my Kristen Hirsch scale. I was wrong. Now, please don't go and edit this. And this is a message to my wife. Please don't ever go and edit this show and take the, I was wrong. In fact, I'm saying it again. And use that as a sound clip to send to me and say, you see, you were wrong. Um, I was wrong about, let's put into context, the fact that there isn't earbuds that can compete with over the years. And I score these JLab epic earbuds a solid nine out of 10 on the Kristen Hirsch, your ghost scale. So well done, JLab. This is an incredible product. As I said, I'm super stoked that I get to review your tech. I love reviewing your tech. 
Um, I have another pair of headsets that I've been wanting to review for a while, um, which I've actually been using quite a lot lately as well. So maybe I'll bring those into another show as well. But I don't want anything to take away from uh, today's review. Um, but yeah, if you, I'd actually have to give a shout out to Aria at the moment. Aria being the little um, headset person that you are that, that came out terribly not the little headset person but he's got this thing about headsets right like it's just his thing so you probably need to get your hands on a pair of these like he often finds me goes what do you think of da, 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 da. and i'm like well you probably know more than me i'm going to give you an opinion now here's a challenge go out and get a pair of these headsets i promise you you will not be disappointed so that takes us to the end of um things with a z um i i must just say i'll finish it off there i mean i have a few headsets that i truly love and have loved over the years um the jlab epic lab edition is now my new favorite in-ear headset and that's that's just it for me so i'll finish off there that's the end of tech news um yeah let's get on to i oh, sorry that was the end of my things with a z so let's get on to tech news Right, so Apple Vision Pro is now a reality. Um, it hasn't made its way to Australia yet, so I actually haven't played with one. Uh, it does have an eye-watering price tag, but with 200,000 orders on launch, clearly there are a lot of people out there that have the money or are prepared to sell limbs, organs, blood, whatever, um, to acquire one. So, look, it's truly an innovative product from my favorite fruit company. Um, there are tons of videos of people using, reviewing, loving hating um on the headset for me until i've played with one I, I you know i have to leave it as dying to try it for myself um but yeah i just obviously wanted to put it out there i think it was it's actually nearly a week now i think it was the second of february that it officially launched in the states um you know it's gen one of the future of spatial computing so i think take from that what you want the only thing i can say is if you watch anything about it on on you know online um, don't be jaded. Like, look at the reviewer, right? If these are people that are categorically Apple haters, you're going to get a shit review. It's just, that's what it's going to be. Um, equally, if the people like myself that are fanboys, you're probably going to get a good review, even if it's not good. So just look for normal people. Like, there's some really cool memes going on out there. Um, you know, like people sitting having lunch with their um, Apple Vision Pros on. So yeah, have a look, follow up, have a, you know, check out some of the stuff. No official announcement as to when it's coming to Australia, so I can't tell you when I'm going to actually get to review one, uh, but I will. Next, uh, well, staying in Australia, Australia, I actually have to read this, right? I don't often read on my shows. My shows aren't scripted. I generally just, I put a plan in place, I put some pictures in place, and I talk about it. So Australia cyber law has been invoked. Now, um, Australian companies face up to 10 years in jail if they pay um ransomware crooks so this is the official statement from canberra which is our capital so australian organizations or individuals who make ransomware payments to reval or uh, alexander Ermakov, i think he's one of the same reval's the, the hacking group name could face up to 10 years jail from today and today was i think two weeks ago um, for the first time, the government has invoked its extraordinary power under its cyber strategy legislation to sanction and prosecute Emikov and anyone else, blah, blah, blah. I'm actually going to read the rest of it. The bottom line is um, they are making it, well, our strong advice to, yeah, I'm quoting, our strong advice to business is never pay the ransom. Paying a ransom does not guarantee sensitive data will be recovered, prevented it from being stolen or leaked online, or prevent further attacks. It also makes Australia a more attractive target for criminal groups, says Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill. Right. So I have an idea, Claire. Why don't you tighten up national infrastructure and proactively hunt these hackers as a government initiative? So, you know, you're going out there and saying you're going to fine a company for paying for ransomware, uh, paying a ransomware request. You've got to understand, government only earns money through tax. Tax comes from businesses that pay tax. If a business is crippled, it loses its revenue, it cannot pay tax, you get no said money. So, again, just an idea. What do I know? But hey, why don't you be proactive? Get some of these really clever people, these, you know, the, the gray hatters or ethical hackers, and send them out there to attack these guys. Find them and, you know, take them out. Don't threaten businesses. Australia is one of the one of the biggest countries in the world per capita per business that has small businesses. You know, 
we can't afford to be turned off or shut down, whatever. That's our lifeblood gone. We don't have a runway of tons of money and insurance policies and that to combat it. So do your job, be more efficient, put up the protection you need and stop us getting hacked. You know, you're pretty much listening and on the lines in that anyway, whether you agree or not. My, my opinion, no substantial fact in that statement, blah, 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 disclosure. Just get on with it, help protect your citizens and businesses. Next. But don't go and pay ransomware. So SAP, um, the software company, will no longer be buying Teslas um, as company cars. And the, the main reason they gave was the price fluctuations actually make it hard to plan for you know, their budgets. And also they, ha they say that they have incredibly unpunctual deliveries. Um, I would say that given that they're a German-based company and all the big marks are now producing EVs, there's probably something in there too. Ooh, conspiracy theory much. Um, I mean, look, let's be honest, right? You know, the German ingenuity and the German timing, um, they, you know, they all, all basically want everything on time and want the best in, of breed and so on. But I think, you know, if you are based in Germany and, you know, if, you, if you've got car manufacturers there, which you do, and lots of good ones, I don't think it's such a bad thing that they do support them. Equally, though, Tesla got a, a knock on their stock exchange. I got a thumbs up from Gal. I don't know if that's because um, she can hear me. I'm pretty sure she's not listening to the show because she, quote, unquote, hears my voice all the time. And the thumbs up is hopefully not to say she's going to be using that voice clip, um, the voice clip that I will be deleting soon. Anyway, so back to SAP. No Tesla's for them. Stock exchange. I mean, Tesla stock took a knock on that one as well, which is understandable. But maybe there's actually a lesson to be learned here, right? Is, you know, Tesla is pretty much the cachet when it comes to EVs, but there's a lot of people coming to eat their lunch, both from the entry level, which is where, you know, people that just can't afford it move back downwards. And then in the luxury side, I drove behind a BMW, I think it was an iX. Um, it was a full electric and it was beautiful. I mean, this was a beautiful looking car. Um, and it's a BMW. So, you know, it's probably in the same type of price points as the top end Teslas. So, you know, you can't rest in your laurels anymore, Elon. You've got to just make sure that if you say you're going to do something, you need to deliver it because you are fairly infamous for saying this is what's going to happen. And then it doesn't happen. And you say it again the next year, just maybe talking a little bit more about um, space. What's it? SpaceX. Anyway, moving on. So, Google. Um, they've launched a really cool feature. It's called Circle to Search. Now, um, basically, it's only available on the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro, which I do have one, um, and the new Samsung Galaxy 24. For now, I'm sure it'll roll out to everything, but at the moment, that's where it is. But basically, if you're looking at something in search, so let's say you're in search um, and you see a model, and if you're watching the show, I've tried to put examples of this up on the screen. You've got... There's a model and they're wearing a pair of glasses, right? And you're wondering where to get them. Instead of like trying to take a Google Lens picture and then putting it into search and searching for it, you just hold the nav button. It brings up a little circle, you uh, like a little tool. You just circle the thing that you're looking for. And Google will actually perform the search there and then like as an overlay. So this is part of the Gemini AR technology that's being deployed. Um, you can also do a squiggle as well. You can like scribble it. So you can, same thing, push the button and then just... Um, like draw a squiggle over the item. Um, this actually works on buildings as well. If you want to know a building, like there's a building in the picture, you can just do a squiggle and it will identify it and or hopefully will identify it and show it to you. Um, and then the other thing that was cool as part of this um, circle to search, you've got a circle, a squiggle, and you've got highlight. So let's say you're playing like a um, a puzzle, like what's the word? I'm, I can't think of the word, man. I've gone blank. A crossword puzzle. See, clearly I don't script these things. I would have a script to read if it would help me. So if you're doing a um, crossword puzzle, and there's a word there that you just stuck with. You just hold the button, highlight the word, and it will actually bring up the meaning of the word or the context of the word. Um, apparently, this works on their videos as well. The example that I put up on the show, if, you, if you're watching my show, is Thrift Flip. There was a video, and this is the best thrift flip I've ever done. And you highlight the word thrift, because I don't know what a thrift flip is. Um, I'm going to just guess that it's someone that's gone to the thrift store and bought something and flipped it out or sold it. Flip means sold. I don't know. It's irrelevant. But if you do the feature, you could find out. So, yeah, it's cool. Um, 
what I like about it is you don't have to leave an app that you're in. And that's always been the problem with phones versus PCs. And PCs, you can have multiple tabs open. So you never actually leave your experience or your environment. You just open something else and close it. But with phones, you have to always go back and then get back into where you were. So um, really cool. Um, yeah, I, I think it's great. It's a nice example of AI. Um, and I think that brings us to the end of tech news. It does. So are you game? Um, hmm. Feeling like it's a bit cliched, right? So I looked at Pell World. Now, if you haven't heard of Pell World, the way I can probably describe it is that Fortnite and Pokemon had a dirty night together in Vegas, and Pell World would, would be the result. Um, it's an early access game, and it's not free. Uh, and that being said, they've had over 19 million downloads uh, or sales. So that's about $80 million. Uh, and this is on a game that's an early access, right? Now, this is a game that's obviously going to shake up to, to be something quite special. Um, although Nintendo's not suing them just yet, um, rumors have it that they're not so enthralled as people are referring to it as Pokemon with guns. And I think that's probably also what helped the game get the popularity um, that it was or that it's actually clearly enjoyed with over 19 million downloads. Um, but basically, I'm trying to describe this for people that aren't watching the show, but if, if you picture Fortnite with a big world, so you've got this huge open world environment and you have a character and you're playing the same way and in fact the action the body looks the same when you're chopping up things and trees and, and, and stones and that like you would in Fortnite. Um, you've got these little, see, I want to say Pokemon characters, but I'm scared I might be sued as well. Um, but you've got these like little, let's call them anime style characters that are running around and you can actually harness them and use them like you would in that other game um, when you're attacking other animals that are out there in your world um, and you can actually use them to attack with you. Um, so I can kind of see where the Pokemon company, Nintendo, might be a bit concerned with this game. Yet, fun fact, um, only popular Pokemon are registered trademarks. So even if they had used the same names for their characters, which they haven't because they weren't silly, um, I don't actually think that the Pokemon company could do anything if they used names of non-trademarked or registered trademark. I'm a lawyer. I don't know. But it's, it's definitely showing promise to be something good. Um, it kind of ends the way you would expect an early stage game to end with well, a bit wanting. Um, but then again, they've just raised $80 million, right? So I'm pretty sure that they'll now employ some really cool tech people to come on and, and build up the next levels. The world, when you look at it, is massive. So it's not a game that you're going to play and be bored of quickly. There's going to be a lot to explore. You know, it's MOBA meets RPG. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, Fortnite Pokemon type game. It's probably the best way to describe it. Don't know if you're allowed to use Pokemon as a genre. Um, hashtag trademark doesn't belong to me or anyone that's mentioned, just for reference point. Uh, but yeah, so that was the game that I, I played this last, well, few days, 10 days, whatever it's been. Um, definitely worth having a play. Um, and I think, I assume and hope that now that we've spent the money when the updates come, we actually get them. I don't think they're going to charge us. I'm sure there'll be packs and there's obviously going to be Clearly, there's going to be um, in-game purchases and micro-purchases as well, like there are with Fortnite. So, yeah, these the, the guys, I think it's called Pocket Gear, they're on to, to make some really big money here. Um, and that then takes us to Q&A. So the question I got is, is the Fold now available in Australia? So just to add in there, Google Fold. So the Google Fold is the phone like the Samsung Galaxy that folds. Um, it is, but it's not official. So that means you are possibly buying gray stock, um, as Google does not have it on their store. Um, and it's not officially announced in the Australian market. Um, I did see it was for sale at certain online retailers, but not officially from Google. There's no official statement from Google about the presence and announcement of the fold for the Australian market. So why is that important that I'm putting that out there? Okay, so I've done a lot of work, and you might remember in the early days, I was even sponsored by TCL. So I do understand the phone and phone market quite well. Most people talk about phones being locked 
or unlocked, as in they lock to a network. So if you buy a phone on agreement, let's say Telstra, they might lock the phone so you can't put a Optus SIM or where, whichever country on the world. That's been going on for years, right? And there's a lot of contention around that as well. But if you buy an unlocked phone, so let's say you go into an Apple store or a Google store and you buy a, a phone from that brand that and not linked to a carrier agreement, those phones are unlocked and they will work anywhere in the world. There is a little bit of a segue to that, which a lot of people don't know. The aerial technology inside phones is actually quite sensitive. And generally, some phones or some telcos in certain countries only operate between certain frequencies. That's because they legislated to run between those frequencies and or they've bought range on those frequencies. So when a phone arrives in the country, it generally goes to the telcos to ensure that the aerials will work on that, you know, on that country's network and that there's no issues that are going to be created. Now, I'm not suggesting that if you bought a fold overseas or even if you bought it from one of the online resellers that are currently selling it here, that it won't work. I'm just pointing out that if it is a gray product, in this case, by definition, it would be because it's not officially brought in by Google, um, then you may have issues. And those issues could be connectivity issues. And that's not something that anyone here is going to be able to help you with. So just bear that in mind. Um, I'm dying to play with the Google Fold. Uh, I mean, I've, as you know, I've reviewed pretty much every phone from the Pixel 5 upwards um, and the tablet. So I'm definitely a big fan of their hardware. But, you know, if it's not here, there's a reason it's not here. And whatever that reason may be, I don't know. Um, and Google hasn't told us. But, the, but it is not an official phone in the Australian market. So just bear that in mind and probably take that advice to anything that you buy that has a tech bias to it. So if that was um, that was Q and A, not if that was Q and A, um, that would then take us to the end of the show. So Cade made me a very cool uh, intro. He has made me a cool outro. So I'm going to play that for the first time. And uh, until next time, keep your screens clean and your knobs shiny. Mm -hmm.